Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to answer a question that my students frequently ask me when they begin their readings on portfolio management. They come to me with two formulas for computing portfolio variance for a two-asset portfolio and ask which one should be used. Let me give you the two formulas first. This is the first one. That variance of a two-asset portfolio can be written as E times RP minus RP bar squared which says that we should consider the squared deviations of portfolio returns from the mean portfolio return. RP is the portfolio return and RP bar is the mean portfolio return. The letter E outside the bracket, this one, is the expectations operator and incorporates the element of probability. So what we are saying is that this formula is also equivalent of writing it this way. That for all possible outcomes that may happen and may vary from 1 to n, we can multiply the probability of an outcome, i, with the return of the portfolio if that event happens, rpi, minus the mean portfolio return. So inside the bracket we have taken the deviation and we are squaring it up. So i, as I mentioned just now, is a possible outcome. pi is the probability of that outcome and rpi is the portfolio return for a given outcome. The second formula that my students bring to me is this. That the variance of a two asset portfolio could also be written as w1 squared where w1 is the proportion of money that is invested in asset 1 times the variance of asset 1's returns plus w2 squared where w2 is the proportion of money invested in the second asset times the variance of returns of the second asset plus 2 times w1 w2 times covariance between 1 and 2. Both formulas are essentially the same. With a little mathematical juggling we can show this. Let us start with the first formula, this one here. And we are going to proceed towards the second one. Let us say W1 is the proportion invested in asset 1, W2 is the proportion invested in asset 2, R1 is going to be our return on asset 1 and R2 is going to be our return on asset 2. So we can now rewrite the first formula. Let us do that. Variance of the portfolio can be written as E, this E here, this one, and inside the square bracket we are going to write the portfolio return. So if we are investing our money in two assets, our portfolio return is going to be W1 times the return on portfolio 1 if outcome I happens plus W2 times return on the second asset if outcome I happens and from this we are supposed to subtract the mean portfolio return this one here which is going to be W1 times the mean return on the first asset plus W2 times the mean return on the second asset. Close brackets, close the square bracket and square. Let us now collect terms. We have W1 
and we are writing inside the bracket return on the first asset if outcome i happens and there's a w1 here as well so we write a minus mean return on asset 1 plus now let's collect the w2 terms w2 times return on the second asset if outcome i happens minus the mean return on the second asset close brackets and let's square this up now we know from elementary maths that a plus b whole squared is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab so in this formulation now this one let this be a and let this be b and we can open the bracket so we can say that the variance of the portfolio is going to be equal to the expectations operator start bracket so we are going to write now a square which is going to be w1 squared times this term here squared plus we now want to write b square this is our b term so we write w2 squared times the term inside the bracket squared plus now we want to write the 2ab part so 2 times this term this one times this term so this is going to give us 2 times w1 times w2 and these two terms inside the brackets so let me try to write them here in a little smaller font so that everything can fit into one line and then we need to close the bracket so we have expanded the a plus b whole square formation now let us see what we can do let us now try to rewrite the variance of the portfolio what we know now that expectations are associated only with returns there are no expectations about the weights so we can keep the weights separate so from here we can write w1 squared as it is and since the expectation is associated only with the returns we are going to write expected and then inside the bracket we are going to write this term close brackets we are going to do the same thing for the second term we are going to keep the weight of the second asset squared outside and use this expectations operator with the return part we can do the same thing for the third term so we can write the weight part 
separately 2 times W1 times W2 and we can multiply the expected the expectations part this part here which is R 1i minus R 1 bar multiplied by R 2i minus R 2 bar close brackets now let us look at what we have we have this W 1 squared and if you look at this term here and compare it with this item here it is easy to see that this term is nothing but the variance of the first assets return so we can write that similarly from this term we have a W2 squared and this this part this part here is nothing but the variance of the second assets return plus we have a 2 times W1 times W2 and this part here is nothing but the covariance between the returns of asset 1 and asset 2 which we can write as covariance sigma between 1 and 2 and there we have it this formula is the same thing as this formula and we have derived this by starting from the first formula here I hope this removes the confusion both formulas are same and can be used depending on what input data we are dealing with see you later